are you really poor? Are you super rich? Well, it doesn't really matter. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys in this video how to house your ants cheaply. Unless, unless you click away. But don't click away, just watch the video. Alright, let's get started. Now, you might have seen in like online catalogs from the bigger companies that, you know, if you buy a formicarium, they're really expensive. And while it's true that it's really hard to make a formicarium yourself that's as good and as, you know, nice looking as the ones you can find online, you can still house your ant colonies really cheaply if you don't really care about the, the look of the setup. Now, if you only have one queen, right, and you just found her, then honestly, the cheapest, most efficient, and just all around the best way to house a single ant queen is with a test tube, like this one. Now, these are really cheap. Um, they're like a dollar each. Uh, you can get glass ones or plastic. Now, I find that plastic ones tend to get scratched really easily on the inside when you're working with like tools inside. So a plastic one can't really be re reused as much. A glass test tube, like this one I reused five times, six times already for many different queens. So yeah, glass test tubes are really reusable, but plastic or glass test tubes both work perfectly fine for your queen. Now, once you get your first workers, this is where a lot of people make mistakes. You know, I've seen a lot of beginners, um, they have like three, four workers and they just say, Oh, I got workers, I gotta put them in a formicarium, right? And then they go and buy this huge formicarium and put the ants inside. And that not, not only is that bad for your ant colony if they have too much space, but it's also very stressful for them, like, and they all actually, um, they put the garbage in some of the chambers of the formicarium and it'll start molding and a host of problems will come up. Now the first thing you want to do once you get workers is actually just to keep them in the test tube. Like you don't even need to put them in the outworld, just keep them in the tube. Like here you can see my Laceus colony, which has 25, around 30 to 25 workers, and they're living this test tube perfectly fine. Now to decide when you need to upgrade to a bigger enclosure and setup, um, basically when you can no longer possibly work with them inside the test tube without you know workers escaping, etc., that's when you need to upgrade to a bigger tube. But before then, as long as you can, you know, take out their food and give them new food without workers crawling everywhere outside the tube, then you're still, like, perfectly fine. Now, this Laceus colony will actually be moved to a bigger enclosure soon, a bigger setup, and there are a few options for what you can do here. One option is to move them into a professional formicarium, like this one. Now, I will be making a detailed guide on how to move your ants, but basically, you need to put the test tube into the outworld section, and then shine a heat lamp or something else that'll give them a lot of light and a lot of heat which they don't like and then cover up the uh, part of the nest that you actually want them, them to move into and then with that part covered and moist and their test tube dry and like um, hot that then they'll probably move into the formicarium now this formicarium is actually a little bit too big for this colony and this is a colony of around 20 Camponatus carpenter ants so basically they really don't need too much space. If you're in doubt, go with the smaller formicarium. It's actually like usually better in my opinion. Because like as you can see, because there's too much room, they've used the bottom two chambers as garbage dumps, and that's always a pain to remove. The advantage of this setup is that it looks really nice. Um it looks like very good like on the table as a decoration, but a disadvantage is that it costs a lot of money. Like this setup cost me around $60 plus shipping from Tarkio Ants. So there is another option. Basically, you can take one of those plastic bins that you find at dollar stores and just put the tube in that and use the, let them live in the tube, like the tube, the tube will be their chamber where they live and have their brood, etc. And you just put the food in the outworld, which is the plastic bin. Now, you know, these plastic bins are like two bucks at dollar store. They're very cheap. And while they look very ugly and the lid doesn't work that well, they still, like, they're perfectly fine to keep ants in. So you just have to unplug the cotton and let the ants live in the tube and forage around in the outworld. And the best part about the setup is that as the colony gets bigger, you can just keep adding more and more test tube setups. And you know, like for example, if this colony gets to around a thousand workers, I can have, you know, seven, eight test tubes in there for them to live in. And if the colony gets so big that like it's impossible to house them because there will be no space for a... Uh, them to forage like it'll just all be test tubes you can just attach this plastic bin to a second plastic tub and use that one as you know a outworld and this one as a living quarters and just stack a bunch of test tubes in there now to secure the test tubes and stop them from rolling around what i use is a uh, clay like modeling clay now like clay has been used by many uh, ant keepers that i know and it's perfectly safe for your ants um, they will, they, like, they might dig into it a little bit, so don't put too much, but just a little bit, like, underneath the test tube will secure it in place. Now let's talk about preventing escapes, which is very important if it's a setup that you're making yourself. 
Now, first of all, you need to provide them with ventilation. So what you can do is you can cut a square like I did in the lid and then use a very fine, very, very fine mesh like that and just put two layers of it and uh, super glue it on. Now, this usually works unless you have very, very small ants and you don't even want to risk it with mesh. What you can do is you can just tap a bunch of holes into the top with a thumbtack and make sure the holes are very small. Ants don't need that much ventilation and just put, put a bunch of like small holes and it's basically impossible for ants to escape. Now there are some species of ants that are just complete escape artists like Laceus and also um, Solenopsis and many others too and basically they're all small ants and they climb up surfaces super easily and what they can do is um, they can just maybe maybe fit through the hole on top. So what you want to do with these is you want a second layer of protection. For example um, you can use olive oil for some species but for the species that really are good at climbing you're gonna need fluon which is a uh, it's also called liquid uh, PTFE and it's a chemical that stops insects from climbing up and this is basically foolproof if you apply it on both the lid and the container itself so if you just apply it on the walls of the container there's a small chance that your ants will be such escape artists that they'll actually climb up all the way to like the lid and they'll like, still squeeze through the gaps. I mean, it's a small chance, but why risk it, right? So what I do is I also put some of the uh, fluon on the lid, like under it, and it's literally impossible for them to climb upside down on the lid if there's fluon. Now, fluon is actually pretty hard to find, but um, you can probably order it online from a number of different stores. I'll put a few links in the description to those stores, and basically, it is a bit pricey, but just a small bottle will last you a long time. You'll probably need to like replace it once a month, and when you replace it, just wash all of it off and then re redo it. Don't just add another layer on top, because over time that'll stop working, because there'll be some parts that just stick out and become too rough. So yeah, you need to wash off all the uh, old fluon that's dried up. Alright, thanks guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully, now that you've seen this video, um, you can you know how to house your ant colonies cheaply without spending too much money on professional form or carrier. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe. Bye.